AMI is the place to go to find television shows and documentaries that focus on the unique experience of Canadians with disabilities. If you want to learn more about the network and the people behind those shows, there's an event for you. It's called AMI Connect. It's taking place Thursday, June the 3rd. It's a chance to learn all about our programming and the people who make them. Visit amiconnect.vfairs.com to learn more. amiconnect.vfairs.com This is an AMI podcast. I'm Dave Brown, and this is a podcast version of AMI's morning show, Now with Dave Brown. Catch the live broadcasts weekdays from 9 to 11 a.m. Eastern on AMI-audio and AMI-tv. Welcome back. It's now with Dave Brown on AMI-audio and AMI-tv. Just before we get to Jim Crisco, I've got one more news story that I want to share with you, and it's something a little bit of fun here. In front of Gate 1 at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, a pair of motor racing fans got married. Chuck Chuck Sievertson recaps the nuptials. The bride. Could have got a wedding dress cheaper. (laughs) They don't make white suits, so I had to get it all custom made. Julie St. Clair and Rob Nichols had special racing suits exchanging vows at Indianapolis Motor Speedway on Grand Prix Day. The man officiating. Triumph over the challenges on your racetrack of life. Ow. May you always find a safe track to call home. Exhausting. We just love being at the track and have a lot of fun. I'm just a huge fan. She comes from a racing family, so. Their wedding racing suits were covered with sponsor logos. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News. I love this. I understand weddings are a big deal. They're an important day in your life. But I think people are starting to get a little bit too self-serious with the wedding thing. If you like racing, go do your wedding at a racetrack. Have some fun with it. If you like golf, go get married on a golf course. It doesn't always need to be a big to-do. In fact, the most fun weddings that I've been to are the ones that are not a big to-do, that are just chill and fun and unique. So I know some folks might be saying, I would never get married on a racetrack. Nobody's forcing you to. But think outside the box and have a little more fun while you do it. Speaking of having fun, let's bring in Jim Crisco. He is an AMI content development specialist, and he joins us for the Western Regional Reports from Edmonton, Alberta. Hey, good morning, Jim Good morning, Dave. Jim, what do you what do you think? You know, a little bit, a little bit of variety in the wedding world. It doesn't always need to be in a church in a banquet hall. Well, you know, uh, I'll tell you the little bit of variety we had in our wedding uh, with Jan and I, and this was just over thirty years ago. We just celebrated our thirtieth oh, anniversary. Oh, happy last anniversary, week. Jim! It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, when we came, because we had a the, the the church service, and then we went to a hall for the for the uh, evening dance and stuff. In, going into the hall, we had the th- uh, the theme music from Hockey Night in Canada play us in. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. You see, that's it. A little bit of unique touches here and there. And by the way, I didn't mean to be judgy when I said churches and halls. You know, people can do what they like. I went to a wedding a couple of years ago at the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic. They just they just rented out one of the rooms on the ocean front. Now, obviously, that's a little bit pricey, but it was still just like a super, super fun, really great night. Uh, another friend did his at the Museum of Nature in Ottawa, just renting out the top floor. So much fun fun so cool there's all kinds of ways to do it think a little bit outside the box and sometimes you can do it expensive sometimes you can do it cheap but those little personal touches that's why people are there because they love you they want to be with the people that they love so don't be afraid to like let your let your flag fly absolutely and you know i i think that that's one of the times you get to see the couple's personality right and you get to see how how uh, you know what everybody likes to do or what what everybody's interested in the funny the bittersweet thing about the the hockey night in canada theme was that the night before our wedding the dallas stars uh eliminated the oilers from the playoffs that year so oh my oh <laughs> yeah. my that's how those, those know, darn those darn stars uh <laughs> darn that mike medano uh jim let's get down to business here with the alberta report here let's begin in alberta where there's a great new opportunity for people with developmental disabilities at olds college and inclusion alberta so what is this news story tell us about the program well what it is is olds college uh, is is running a program now uh, for persons with del- developmental disabilities. There's going to be multiple um, different uh, programs, actually, or, or subjects that you can take. And what it is is it, it's just a totally inclusive post-secondary experience. So folks get an opportunity to uh, the, that may have developmental disabilities to 
Learn, uh, you know, learn skills to get a, a, a post-secondary uh, diploma or certificate and be able to work towards uh, employment. And, and Olds College is a smaller community in central Alberta. So tell us a bit more about some of the programs that are going to be available. Well, Olds College is a an ag- agricultural-based uh, university. They have many, many different types of courses. But what they're going to be, specifically right now, what they're targeting in the courses is... Uh, they're going to target agriculture, horticulture, animal science, and beer making. Ooh. So, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that last one. Uh, when are they expected to start? Uh, this fall. They're looking at, at opening up these uh, uh, this opportunity in the fall. They're hoping that <clears throat> that people, you know, from, from far and wide... Uh, who may want the opportunity, may want the opportunity to uh, to move to campus and live on campus, will be given that opportunity this fall. So, uh, and, you know, hopefully we'll be at the point in the pandemic where uh, it'll actually be in person. Mm-hmm. Fingers crossed on that one for sure. Uh, Jim, give us a little bit of context here, because Alberta has developed something of a reputation for making post-secondary institutions uh, accessible for people with developmental disabilities. Yes. You know what? Uh, uh, apparently... Alberta is the the number one jurisdiction in the world for providing opportunities uh, for for post post secondary for uh, persons with developmental disabilities. So that's a real feather in the cap of of uh, you know the this area for Alberta for Canada uh, to be able to say that. So this is just another sort of extension of it. It's it's a matter of um, making more of this mainstream and just giving the opportunity and and having more institutions provide these type of uh, possibilities and these opportunities. So it's great to hear. I, it, it's nice to be on the cutting edge of this versus trailing behind. So uh, let's hope that this grows. I, I think that the popularity of it will sort of become its own momentum and and, and grow more. Where can people find out more? Uh, people can go to, they, they've, the, the, the college is, has partnered up with Inclusion Alberta. And Inclusion Alberta is a, a is a nonprofit organization that works uh, with persons with uh, families and persons with uh, disabilities to help them get opportunity. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, so if you go to inclusionalberta.org, they have the information there. You're, you'll be able to uh, to to get the information you need to contact the college to sign up to figure out if this is an opportunity for you. Excellent. Now, Jim, let's uh, take a quick, a quick moment here to talk about Manitoba, where over the past weekend an event called Cripple Palooza took place. So, who put on the event, and what's it all about? Uh, the uh, <coughs> the event, actually, the funny thing is, uh, or the interesting thing is, that this event is was an online comedy festival, basically, and it was put on by Sick and Twisted Theater, uh, which is awesome, and. What it did was it allowed uh, the 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 uh, persons with disabilities who happen uh, who are performers, it gave them the opportunity to perform in uh, in a virtual fest, uh, festival. And the 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 thing is, and they've interviewed some some uh, people from the that that participated in the show. The interesting thing is that this, you know, the fact that they had to do it virtually due the, to the pandemic actually really opened up this opportunity for a lot of persons with disabilities mm. who may not have been able to perform or as easily perform at a venue or get to a venue or or adapt their show to a venue were able to perform in in this environment perhaps better than live so it it really was a a, a very interesting and a very cutting edge once again another cutting edge thing another uh uh cutting edge opportunity for for performers to be able to get their audience get to their audience and truthfully have a level playing field with uh, with other performers. Yeah, it really speaks to the uh, the double-edged sword that's come with COVID-19. A lot of isolation has uh, impacted a lot of people, but the virtual space being opened up for a lot of performers and virtual events has uh, changed the game for a lot of performers with disabilities who might be a little more comfortable working from home or people with disabilities who uh, want to attend these events but maybe don't want to go out and venture into the oftentimes inaccessible world. So very cool to see uh, that gang working on a Cripple Palooza over in the Manitoba region. Jim, we've only got a couple seconds left here, but I want to go back to your wedding 30 years ago in the middle of May when the Edmonton Oilers were a good hockey team. Who planned that? You couldn't think about a wedding in June or July, you know, not Stanley Cup season? <laughs> well, we, we were hoping to have this mid-playoff run celebratory wedding. 
And uh, and it actually marked the end of our <laughs> the Oilers season uh, the, the day before. Uh, but having uh, and actually they went into kind of a drought since then. So yeah, I was going to say that was the last that was sort of the last great memory in Oilers town <laughs> until about 2006. But even then, that's, that's a fleeting memory these days, too. I'll tell you real quick, Jim, in 2014, I was supposed to MC a wedding on a Friday night that was in danger of coinciding with game seven of a Montreal Canadiens New York Rangers series. If the series had gone seven, I was given permission from the groom not to MC the wedding. So that would have been uh, that would have been cool. But in the end, Montreal got knocked out. So I was able to MC the wedding and it's all good hey jim always fun catching up with you have yourself a wonderful day talk to you again in a couple weeks you bet have a great week Dave. you've been listening to now with dave brown hit the subscribe button on any podcast platform and leave us a rating and a review